took some photographs of my garden, my flowers, and go to church, and they're still in my purse. I forgot to take them off, and just threw them out on the table, and somebody just said, wow, are those postcards? No, they're just my pictures. I go, wow, you know, you should make cards. Well, I suppose I could, so I kind of got going, got found all the things, and did the research, and made some cards, and got up a little nerve to ask the local drugstore if they would like to carry some of my cards, and oh yeah, sure, surprise me. <laughs> oh, that's good, you know, so about a year and a half now I've had cards there, and they just keep selling and selling, and I just... Um, few more places, I just got to get up the nerve to get out there and find the time to go do it. But that that's kind of one of those fears, things that I need to get over is I just need to go out and ask. Because the people I do run into just say, you know, wow, those are fabulous pictures. And, you know, to me, oh, well, it's just what I do, you know. <laughs> get a lot of positive feedback so I know if I just take that next step, those baby steps or whatever, it would really go, but yet I still think that, oh, what if it gets out of control? <laughs> then what do I do? So, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, I gotta just do it. I mean, brings a good point, and that is just ask. Just like Kathy has asked now, and I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow you get a sponsor call. I have some ideas for it. So, oh, yeah. Sheila said, um, I've also been at the same job for like 20 years. I look for something different, and I've always been interested in reading, learning how to save your money or make the most of your money, and I feel it's important to teach kids how to do that too. So, I'm starting a mini coaching business to coach people and to give uh, worship workshops and stuff about saving your own, how to make the most of your, like in your our economy and stuff now, and teach kids how to. Yeah, with financial matters. Hi. Hi. <laughs> My name is Heather. Um, I, get, I think the story Van wants me to share. Um, I have had a dream for a very long time to be a, be a public speaker. So I actually really enjoy public speaking. Um, and I went to college and majored in speech communication. And this is my goal. I want to be a motivational speaker. And my mother lovingly teases me that I'm not motivated enough to be a motivational speaker. But the truth is, is that I'm 19 years old and I've had a pretty cool life and I really didn't know what I would have to speak on. Um, any great speaker you've ever heard, they have some really great stories, um, sometimes tragic stories, but I didn't have any. So there I am at work. Um, I worked for Joseph School of Hair Design in Grand Forks for seven years, and I got a phone call um, from an administrative professional member asking me to be, um, or no, sorry, asking me to donate a gift certificate to a banquet that they were having. And I said, yeah, of course, we'll donate a gift certificate. And then she said, well, would you like to attend the luncheon? And I said, well, maybe, who's the guest speaker? And she said, well, we don't have one yet. And I said, I'd like to do it. <laughs> and honestly, it wasn't even really me who said it. I don't know who said it. <laughs> but this voice said, yeah, I want to be a speaker. And so she said, oh, okay, well, pitch your idea to me, and I'll take it back to the board. Oh, yeah, an idea. Yeah, I don't even have an idea. <laughs> I have nothing. And so I go home that night. And I researched the International Association of Administrative Professionals. And ladies, this is a big deal. This is a big organization. And I am way in over my head. I don't even know what I'm doing. So I panic. I call my aunt, who's a great mentor in my life. And I said, oh, I just volunteered to do this thing. I don't know what I'm doing. And she said to me, back out. Don't do it. You're over, you're over your head. Exactly. And so, and we've kind of heard that actually, that consistency throughout the stories tonight. You will have those roadblocks. Expect them. Wait for them. Every time you have an awesome idea, expect somebody to say, that's a bad idea. Expect someone to tell you what your challenge is going to be, and then don't accept it. Yeah. Don't stop there. Because I didn't. I almost did. I almost said, you're right, I'm going to call her tomorrow and say it back out. But I didn't. I came up with a topic. <laughs> 
And it's actually about shoes. Um, I walk you through kind of different um, shoes in your life and that represent different stages. So like baby shoes, anytime we start something new, and just kind of working throughout different pairs of shoes. Um, and actually, so this was five years ago. Um, it was a 10 minute speech for a banquet. It went fine, but then probably a year later I got called again to do it again. And that's what blew me away. Someone else wanted to hear it. <laughs> and so I said, sure. The crazier thing about this is this woman wanted to pay me. <laughs> In fact, I said I would do it for free, and she said, absolutely not, we're going to pay you. Okay, so I took the money. Bought more shoes. And, yes! <laughs> and since then, I've actually been um, invited. I've had the just blessing and opportunity to give this speech for um, groups like um, Cass Clay County, um, child care professionals or foster care professionals. Um, I've done administrative professionals a couple times, um, church events, and retreats. This summer I've actually done two retreats. And I can't believe it. I can't believe people are continuing to call me because they want to hear me. But the truth is that this is something that I've wanted to do since I was probably 18. And it's just, it's really been effortless. So. Hello, my name is Janae Holland. Um, I feel very um, blessed and honored to be living my dream because I kind of stumbled upon it by accident. Um, my whole life growing up, I wanted to be a singer. I sing at church. My dad's a pastor. Um, I sing since I could talk, and I wanted to be a singer and had watched singers on TV. Audrey Hepburn and Grace Kelly were like my... My mentors growing up, I was so inspired by both of them and was very drawn to art and beauty and music at a very young age. And the word goddess, when I first, before I even met Darcy or Sheila, the word goddess has always resonated with me because I'm so drawn to just beauty of any kind. And I see it in so many people in different forms and have an amazing appreciation for it. And my dream of singing, I got a scholarship, went to college for music, and decided I didn't like it. It didn't make me happy. Singing in front of people was empty and unfulfilling, and I realized I just, it made me feel icky, and it took all the joy out of what I thought was my dream. And then I felt really lost. Because I thought, well, if that's not my dream, that's what I thought I wanted to be my whole life. And now what do I do? Now I'm left uh, alone. I felt very isolated and very um, out of touch with myself. But I, I knew I loved art. So I got back into doing art. And the, the art side of it was a draw, but I wanted people to be involved. And realized, I'm like, well, hair school is easy. A lot of people do it. I should, I should try that. And I had, as Darcy, I could really relate to her dabbling in many different things and just love, I love many different things. I'm so all over the place. Um, but I went to hair school, kind of on a whim, thought at least I'll be able to support myself and see where it goes. On the first day of school, I was terrified because I was raised in a very conservative, um, borderline suppressed religious home that had very little color and very little um, the thought of trends and pretty was a sin or looked down upon and my whole life inside I was this colorful out there love trends love sparkle love color person and realized that my whole life I had not been allowed to be that so coming to hair school and seeing all these other girls was like like a cocoon and by the time I left I was this butterfly and not afraid to be who I had always known that I was. And um, yeah, I feel really, really lucky <laughs> to have found so many women who have touched my life and, and men, but to be in this field where I can be who I really am and I don't have to be ashamed of that. Sorry. <laughs> and now I see so much beauty in so many people around me.